Now let's walk through an example of saving some registers. So before we do that, let's ask the question, what registers need to be saved in this example code that we had before? Well, we can take a look at this and we can determine that Kali needs to save registers 20 and 21. And let's walk through all the registers that are used here and figure out what we need to do. So registers four and five and two, well, those are the return value and the procedure arguments. So we don't need to save those because they're the ones that are going back and forth between the procedure, between the caller and the callee. But let's take a look at these registers, 20, 21, and 22. These are used by the caller, but these are callee saved registers. That means if they're used by the callee, the callee needs to save them, but the caller doesn't need to save them. How about these other registers in here, R16 and 17? Well, again, R16 and 17 are callee saved registers. So if the callee uses them, it needs to save them, but the caller doesn't. Same for 18 and 19, callee saved. So the caller doesn't need to save them, but the callee does if it uses them. Now let's go down and take a look at the callee. Well, again, R4, 5, and 2, these are our return value and procedure argument registers, so we don't need to save those. But registers 20 and 21, these are callee saved. So this means that the callee does have to save and restore these if it uses them, and sure enough, our callee here is using them, so we're going to need to save and restore registers 20 and 21 in the callee. So how do we go about and do that? So here's our update procedure. This is our callee. And what are we going to do? Well, the callee uses registers 20 and 21, and they're callee saved. So we need to save them. And then to do that, we need to increment our stack pointer, as bring it down, sorry, decrement our stack pointer. And we've got two things we need to save, our 20 and 21. So we're going to have to move our stack pointer down by two words, or minus eight bytes. And then we go ahead and save them. So we save our register 20 onto the stack and register 21 onto the stack. Now we've saved the values of register 20 and 21 from our caller from main before called the update. So main calls update. The first thing we do in update is save the values that main had for registers 20 and 21, and then we do our calculation. And our calculation writes over registers 20 and 21, but that's okay because we saved them. Now when we're done with our calculation, we have to go ahead and restore those registers. So we go ahead and load both of them back. Here we are restoring register 21 from the stack into register 21, from the stack into register 20, and then put our stack pointer back where it is. And we do this so that now when we return, we put registers 21 and 20 back just the way they were when we called main. So now from main's point of view, when it's jumped and linked into the update, registers 20 and 21 are the same as they were beforehand, even though the update procedure used those registers. So let's take a look at this in a little more detail. So first thing we do is we move the stack pointer down. We move it down to give us enough space to put two things on it. Then we save register 20 at stack pointer plus 4 and register 21 at stack pointer plus 0. Then we go ahead and execute our update, which overwrites registers 20 and 21, but that's okay because we saved them on the stack. So we go ahead and restore them to registers 21 and 20 from the stack and put our stack pointer back. Now let's take a look at what happens to the stack and the register files we do that. So the first thing we're going to do is move the stack pointer down. So here's our stack when we begin. We have some data from the caller on it, and we've got our stack pointer pointing to the end of the stack. Here's our register file. Our register file is filled with data from the caller, and in particular, we're going to look at registers 20 and 21. So the first thing we do is move the stack pointer down, and here we are. We moved it down by 8. So we went from 28 to 20. Now our stack pointer is pointing down here. Now we're going to store registers 20 and 21 to the stack. So to do that, we take the data from register 20 and the data from register 21, and we copy it onto the stack. Now we've saved the values of registers 20 and 21 in case we overwrite them in the register file. Now we go ahead and run update. And update is going to write over registers 20 and 21. So you see here the callee has now written over the data that was in the register file. But it's a good thing we saved that over here onto the stack. Now when we're done with the callee, we need to restore registers 20 and 21 from the stack. So we're going to take the data we saved, which registers 20 and 21 from the caller on the stack, and we're going to put them back into the register file. Once we've done that, we go ahead and move the stack pointer back to where it was, and now what you see here is both the register file and the stack are exactly the same as they were before we called the procedure. So this meant that our procedure didn't corrupt our results here. 
Now, if you notice what happens here, the procedure is actually going to return its results in register 2, so we get the data back in register 2.